Uh, the estate was started in 1901 uh, by James Paul. James Paul married Fanny Drexel, the daughter of Anthony Drexel, who owned thousands of acres in this area. James Paul was, was quite the uh, uh, diplomat in the Radnor area. Uh, he often would hold significant parties here at the estate. It was a complete gentleman's farm and was very self-sustaining. The architect at the time uh, was Horace Trumbauer. He built many of the uh, Elizabethan Tudor type uh, estate houses throughout the Philadelphia area and for that matter up and down the East Coast. Um, he also had a Georgian style which uh, we could all recognize by looking at the Philadelphia Art Museum which he also designed. James Paul passed away about 10 years after the um, estate was completed. Um, his family carried it on for several years and then uh, they didn't wish to have it anymore and they passed it along to John Dorrance, the inventor of Campbell's Soup. Many of the aspects of the estate are very much the same now as they were uh, back in 1901. One of the things, of course, that has grown significantly are the trees. Uh, some of the earlier photos uh, of the estate, uh, it makes, it does, you don't see a, a forest of trees the way we do today, but that's what has transpired over the last hundred years. John Dorrance passed away uh, in, the, uh, in the 40s. His wife, Ethel, uh, held the estate together until the early 50s. Um, and then she passed away and the uh, estate was then put up for auction. Uh, the missionary sisters, Mother Cabrini in particular, um, made a visit to the estate and decided that this was the place where she wanted to start an orphanage. The estate was purchased by the, the sisters in uh, 1953 and the uh, mansion served as an orphanage uh, for three or four years and then uh, it was decided that they would prefer to start a women's college rather than the orphanage. In 1972, um, the college went co-ed and uh, several gentlemen moved in to what we now call the, the Royman's Activity Center. Then it was a, a residence hall. Cabrini looked uh, like a, a little mom and pop store. We had uh, Sacred Art Hall, which is now Founders. We had uh, uh, Grace Hall, which you are in uh, presently. Uh, the mansion, the library, and Woodcrest. And that was the campus. Widener was in the process of being built when I was here. The houses were completed. Uh, Xavier was not here. The only dorm, large dorm, was Woodcrest. The CAC was not here. West Res was not here. Uh, the Dix, the uh, science building was not here. Uh, there was one tennis court that was on the side of the mansion. Now there's four. Uh, if I start down at the Dixon Center, that was where our shop was. It was the garages from the estate. And there was a children's school behind the garages, which is off campus now, which was a big mistake. Well, they've go undergone a lot of changes. Um, Founders Hall, uh, when they took the uh, gymnasium out, they put in the communications center in a second floor. Uh, Widener Center uh, was built. There was an atrium uh, put over the uh, gardens here at uh, Grace Hall. The Dixon Center and, of course, the Idearola Center. Uh, what's changed due to athletics is we now have the, uh, uh, the Dixon Center, which uh, uh, was a state-of-the-art Division III um, uh, facility and is going to be once again with the renovations that are made. Uh, and the number of athletic teams has increased uh, dramatically here at Cabrini since I first came. Uh, essentially, we had only uh, two male teams when I came, soccer, uh, which really started out co-ed, Soccer and um, um, basketball were the only men's teams and uh, very few women's teams. Now we have, what, 10, 15 different teams? The largest scale project that we're doing is the new athletic pavilion. 
Um, that's on track to have its dedication come online right around the opening of the school year next fall. So I'd say probably around September 1. The pavilion itself is about a 44,000 square foot building. Uh, it's a $12 million project. It has a, about a 7,500 square foot fitness center for all students, faculty, and staff. There's classrooms, laboratory space for our exercise science health promotion um, program. There, um, classroom space for um, various types of fitness, so yoga, Pilates, Zumba, etc. And then there's um, dedicated strength conditioning fitness uh, for our student athletes and, and dedicated locker room space for all of our growing intercollegiate athletics. So we have a, a campus master plan that was approved by Radnor Township. Uh, and it goes out to 2025. First project that, that we need to do is actually uh, put in a parking garage. That would be on the southern bowl of the campus right behind Residential Boulevard. So from uh, Eagle Road right into the side of the campus, it's a two-story garage, probably have about 275 or so um, parking stalls. That would allow us to take the parking off of the center quad and then we would put in circular roads so that you access the campus in a loop. And then the shuttles would drop, drop off at the garage. Probably kind of the, the top project that's on my radar screen in the campus master plan for the next decade is to build a standalone true student union. Uh, we probably have a spirit shop, so, we, we, so we'd be able to, be like kiosks like to sell different, you know, you know uh, Cabrini, in the future, Cabrini University gear, et cetera. Um, I want a series of mixed retail in that, so we, that would provide campus jobs for students, and so we could have um, uh, something like, you know, a coffee shop, sub shop, other kind of, kind of mixed retail. And then if you've ever been to Atlanta or Montreal or Toronto, they have the underground city. So one of the big moves in student unions now is to build out the basement or quote lower level and that's all entertainment for students. So I, I would want to put like a video arcade, mini movie theater, bowling alley, kind of lucky strikes, all just kind of student hangout. Well, I think that the uh, same basic raw material is still there with our students. We get. Uh, uh, students uh, who are, you know, some are at the top of their class, some are at the middle. Um, some uh, for Gabrini, it necessarily wasn't their first choice, but when they uh, come to Gabrini, uh, I think that uh, they want to work hard, they want to be successful. Uh, we give them uh, an education of the heart, and uh, I think that uh, the raw material is pretty much the same when I came here 42 years, just a few more bodies around.